as we end today's broadcast by looking at the latest developments in the case of the RNC-8. Last September in St. Paul, Ramsey County prosecutors formally charged eight members of the group RNC Welcoming Committee with conspiracy to riot in furtherance of terrorism. The eight activists are believed to be the first people ever charged under the 2002 Minnesota version of the Federal Patriot Act. The activists face up to seven and a half years in prison. The criminal complaints filed by the Ramsey County attorney reportedly do not allege any of the defendants personally engaged in any act of violence or damage to property. Instead, authorities are seeking to hold the eight defendants responsible for acts committed by other individuals during the opening days of the Republican National Convention. In December, Ramsey County attorney Susan Gartner, who is also running for governor of Minnesota, added three more felony charges, combined the charges could carry a maximum of 12 and a half years in prison. Luce Guyen Givens is one of the RNC eight. Uh, Luce, she's uh, also joined by Jordan Kushner, an attorney for the RNC eight. They both join us from Minneapolis. Um, Luce, when do you go to court? Uh, my next hearing is on February 27th in the morning, and it's a motions hearing on discovery. And what are you exactly charged with? I have uh, four felony counts that I'm facing, um, conspiracy to commit riot and furtherance of terrorism, conspiracy to commit riot, conspiracy to commit criminal damage to property and furtherance of terrorism, and conspiracy to commit criminal damage to property. Lutza, what were you doing at the Republican convention? Well, at the convention, I was in jail. Um, I'd been in jail since the Saturday before, but I did spend a, more than a year and a half beforehand organizing with a group called the RNC Welcoming Committee, and we were primarily an infrastructural logistical group um, bringing together a lot of different people for radical protests at the convention. Uh, Jordan Kushner, there has already been a case that's gone to trial that we covered because it involved um, an FBI informant. That case went to mistrial. What is the significance of the two men who were charged in that case? And that case, um, uh, what was it, a hung jury and what it means for the RNCA? That's right. It was a hung jury. And Technically, it doesn't mean anything for the RNC-8 because there are, there's no connection whatsoever between the RNC-8 and those people, even though the prosecutor in that case was trying to tie them to the welcoming, welcoming committee. But the fact that you had people who indisputably had Molotov cocktails and the jury couldn't agree on convicting them, I don't think that bodes well at all for the state in this case, where you have people who are locked up in jail while the convention protests were going on, aren't accused of having or doing anything that could cause any harm to other people, and yet they're being charged with felony terrorist charges. And uh, Jordan Kushner, the latest information about uh, FBI informant within the RNC Welcoming Committee that has just come out? Um, that's right. He, he, was, um, he was an F. FBI informant, and actually was an FBI informant in that Molotov cocktail case too, although he wasn't called because of the criminal charges of his own that he's facing. He was arrested for some violent burglary charges in January where he broke into someone's house, um, assaulted two people, and so he's facing felony charges right now in Hennepin County over that. He was the most, he's a principal informant in the RNC 8 case, uh, the main person they're relying on to accuse them of planning destruction of property. What will it mean for your case, uh, given that he was just charged in a criminal case? I mean, could uh, charges against him be lessened depending on what he said in the RNC-8 case? Um, well, they, we, don't, uh, we don't know right now because his prosecution is at the beginning stages, and of course it shouldn't have any effect. This is something he did on his own, and it's actually much more violent than anyone that's involved in the protest is accused of doing. So I think it would be scandalous if they lessened his charges in that case and let him out of committing violent felonies because he's cooperating against in a political prosecution against political protesters. And so we'll have to see how this dynamic plays out. Lutz, did you know him? Uh, according to the paper this morning, Andrew Darts, 30 years old, spied on anarchists planning disruptions at the RNC, the paper said. Um, I did know him. He was uh, an active part of the welcoming committee for a number of months before the convention. And he was somebody that I 
saw and spoke to on a regular basis. Um, the uh, For those who are watching TV, we had just showed a picture of Brandon Darby. Now, Brandon was the self-confessed FBI foreman uh, when documents came out showing was in the other case of the two young men who were charged, um, whose case went to, uh, ended up with a hung jury, so they face another case. Um, Lutza, you are the, your case, it's believed that you're the first people to be charged under the Minnesota version of the uh, USA Patriot Act uh, that was passed in 2002. The significance of this as we wrap up. Um, I think the significance is that this is one more step in the process of criminalizing dissent. Of course, people were outraged when the Patriot Act passed in the first place, and then state versions were passed across the country. And it's significant anywhere that people would be prosecuted as terrorists for um, involving themselves in political dissent of any nature. Um, and of course, it's not about necessarily agreeing with our politics um, or towing any sort of party line. It's the fact that we do have a right to protest. Um, any prosecution under a Patriot Act or any similar legislation infringes on those rights. I want to thank you both for being with us. Lutz again, Givens, one of the RNC8. They uh, face trial now. Jordan Kushner, attorney for the RNC8.